Yo, what's up guys? It's RJ with Roots Liberty. Uh, just checking in with you. It is June 20th and I am working outside of the Carbondale, Colorado Library right now. I'll give you a little quick peek at the view. You can actually see Mount Sopris in the reflection. I'll show you actually the mountain itself. There you go. You can see it. It's about uh, 12,000 feet in elevation, so Maybe a little more than that. I think maybe four. No, twelve thousand some change. It's like two and some change miles up, straight up, and then the trail to walk up if you wanted to is I think five miles. I'm not trying to do that. So anyway, guys, just wanted to check in with you guys, give you guys some updates on uh, what's going on with Road to Liberty and maybe how some of these ideas that I'm thinking about. Um, as they come up in my travels, how they, um, you know, might provide you guys some insights in your life and how to, um, you know, work towards more of an active uh, enjoyment of liberty as opposed to, um, you know, more of a conceptual or intellectual understanding of it. Um, so, going back to Try Homeless, uh, you guys who've been following the uh, content so far, um, you know that I was uh, voluntarily homeless and started that out in New Jersey, in Long Branch, New Jersey. Went to Absecon, took an airplane to Los Angeles, spent some time in Venice Beach, went up to Northern California, Humboldt County, um, took a bus to Denver, Colorado area, spent a week uh, in a town called Arvada in a hotel, and then recently just rode um, from Arvada to this town called Carbondale, Colorado. Um, and I think we had a video up not long ago um, showing, uh, you know, little uh, snapshots of going over Independence Pass, which was extremely uh, more uh, treacherous and more uh, exciting than I expected. So anyway, guys, um, I transitioned off of that homeless, um, intentional homeless strategy. And now I'm kind of more back to the traveling lifestyle, but still... Um, you know, with that traveling mentality, the ability to, you know, collect items, live a normal lifestyle, pay for cable, um, you know, even get mail sent to you and have registered address is hard because I'm trying to not sacrifice anything lifestyle wise that's important to me and also not, um, you know, end up fully homeless to where I can't even, uh, you know, battle my way out of it. Um, what was interesting about Try Homeless was that I always kind of felt in control because I know what my options are, I know what skills I possess, but trying to actually get out and only being homeless for a few weeks, I started to realize like, hey, it's actually kind of somewhat challenging to uh, transition up and down lifestyle wise. So that is something that I'm consciously aware of. Um, I want to talk about my rash a little bit, guys. I know we talked about it in the past. Uh, I talk, told you about it a little bit. Um, I gotten uh, like a blister here, or not even a blister. Actually, it was on the side. I gotten um, redness here, and it spread, and it still uh, goes like around. Like, they call it like a cape. I went to a doctor, and uh, I went to the hospital actually, and uh, they said it kind of looked like Lyme disease, but not really, not directly. Um, the the rash wasn't um, the right look of what one would expect with Lyme disease, and. Um, I wasn't displaying most of the most common symptoms. Um, even if it were, it's one of those things where it could be bad, could be not so bad, and there's treatment possibilities. So I got to just got to play it day by day. Um, I was losing some mobility in my left arm. Um, and as you can see now, I could put it above my, my head. That was impossible. I could only get it like up to here like a few days ago. Um, I don't know what that is, what that's about. Um, Neither did the doctors. They did an x-ray of my uh, shoulder and they didn't see anything to concern them. So I said, just basically keep an eye on it, go home and uh, let us know if it gets worse. Um, the meat of this uh, video, guys, I want to talk about relationships and what they mean uh, to me and how I understand relationships and how I think we can understand relationships that we have with each other and with our loved ones, with our family, with our employers and with ourselves. Um, you know, let's start with the value of a relationship. How do you determine what a relationship is worth to you? Um, whether you're single and you're looking for a romantic relationship or you're 
um, making thinking about making a choice that re regards your personal life that might require a sacrifice in a relationship, like maybe moving away from family or friends, or leaving um, a romantic relationship that you've been in for some time. Um, those sort of thoughts, those sort of, sort of options, become more and more narrow as we don't count our options and as we live into a pattern or as into a um, routine. So. I think it does come down to the individual as to what the value of a relationship really is insofar as you have to define what it is that you're looking for in life and then you have to define sort of what characteristics, what qualities, what traits are common in people that have made it to where you want to go and then you have to look for opportunities in life to ally yourself or to put yourself in groups with or involved with people who you know have those traits and who are going or who've already went where you wish to go um, in terms of life in terms of lifestyle you know so for myself one of the main things I'm, I'm you know heavily geared towards and, and uh, working on is the ability to keep this travel lifestyle but to do so a little more comfortably um, the round number that I have in my head for a ballpark is a hundred dollars a day um, income and unlike some of my contemporaries in the Liberty um, content creation business, I'm not hoping to do it all by ad revenue or by donations alone. Granted, I'm open to both of those. Um, you can go to roadsliberty.com forward slash donate or just go to roadsliberty.com or go to the YouTube page and just enjoy the content, which is ad supported. Um, that's great. Um, but my websites that I create, Roads to Liberty, as well as other websites that I have uh, as well, which don't pertain to Liberty or this channel, they all earn a tiny bit of money a month, maybe $10, $20, $30 a month. I have a few sites like this. So I know there's a promise there, but to get from where it's at now to where I can foresee it going is going to take time. It's going to take a lot more effort. It's going to take a lot more um, dedication to making content. So at the end of the day, what you guys can do is you can you can actually share the website you can actually spend time um sharing the articles and telling people what you think and and what your thoughts are and adding your comments you can also uh reach out to me and and talk about writing for Web roads to liberty um we value different viewpoints and we typically want content written by voluntarists or uh, people who don't believe in having a centralized state authority um, there are some exceptions, and if you have an interesting article concept that you think fits in with our audience or our content, I'm open to hearing it and uh, I'll probably put it on the site. So back to relationships. Um, we want to surround ourselves with people that um, are going to help us achieve our goals. And we have to be honest with ourselves whether or not the people that we have around us, whether they're going to help us achieve our goals or whether they're going to stand in the way. Um, so... That's that with um, regards to the value of relationships, understanding the value. How you can really measure it is you want to look at how you're experiencing the relationship, what you benefit uh, from within the relationship, and what you're giving to the other party. It's equally, if, if not more tragic, I think, to count your blessings from the relationship and be so grateful, thinking that you're not being boastful you're not being proud you're, you're appreciating the other person which is great but it's also a trap it's somewhat of a dead end because if you aren't assessing yourself to see if you are making the other person feel um improved by your presence like if you're not assessing to make sure that you bring value to the other person or su sufficient value then you have to question whether you truly love the person you say you love or whether they're um, being with you is more just a convenience for them or a tradition or a safety blanket of sorts. Um, so there's a lot of self-sacrifice in relationships and sometimes that's for the best and sometimes it's not. So deciding whether you're in a situation where you're in a healthy relationship or a toxic relationship is entirely up to you, but it's quite valuable, I would say, to um, spend the time necessary and get the information you need and spend the uh, and, and, and utilize the right form of analysis that you think is right to really process whether you have 
healthy, productive relationships or if you have negative ones, I think that'll help you pursue your personal goals. And if you are pursuing liberty, you will probably thereby increase your personal liberty by, you know, effectively pursuing your personal goals. Um, I want to talk about the value of your relationship with yourself as well. Um, there's a lot of things we do for others or we do things for ourselves that require others. And it's somewhat disingenuous or destructive, I would say, to look at the types of things you can do, but exclude the things you can do alone. Um, looking at the time you have to spend by yourself and to acknowledge that there's certain things you need to do on your own. You need to separate yourself from other people, walk away, go to the library, go somewhere else, run away, whatever the case, and really start to stack your priorities in the order that you think are are highest to lowest and and you know if you're not surrounding yourself with people that are going to return value and are concerned about returning value to then you're not in a healthy relationship because you're not even with someone that's willing to assess what the ratio is if you're bringing more if they're bringing more who can work who should work who's working harder if that conversation can't be had because it's too stressful or the per person on the l more taking end isn't willing to get into that uh, conversation, then that's a threat and that's an issue. You should act on that. Um, so I, I wanted to dive into relationships today because I feel like it's um, a real make or break for me. It's a real make or break for anyone trying to pursue goals in their life. Um, what are we at here? Only 11 minutes. We'll keep going. Um, going from there, we could talk about the value of our relationships. Um, I'm sorry, we talked about the value of our relationships with ourselves, um, the balance between self and other. So it's a cyclical re relationship. All of our mannerisms, all of our ways of, you know, conducting ourselves between speech and dress and um, habits, attitudes, beliefs are usually siphoned or collected or osmosis you know, taken away from something else. Um, so we have a very strong need for the other, but I think we as individuals sometimes over invest in the other being one specific person in monogamy or in, you know, the notion of family to where at the end of the day, we have ourselves. We have ourselves for our successes, for our failures, for, you know, the finite time and choices and resources we choose and allocate the way we do so um, there's no doubting that the self is quite important and every other that you benefit from or, or or don't that you know you might be compromised by they too have this battle of self and other and they too are trying to decide how to engage and how to think and how to process questions of their own so um Part of my choice to travel and to be around the world and to meet different people is to how I could process um, my quest for liberty and how I could better determine what relationships are valuable with other people and how I can have the best relationship within myself to myself. You, some of you guys know that I try my hardest to not have a full-time job. Um, I do get some clients for website design, internet marketing, social media graphics design and uh, content creation, content writing, but it's, you know, it's not as steady as it could be at times, and uh, once in a while I will pop into uh, an office or uh, sometimes a car dealership and try to get uh, a little bit extra savings put up, put together, so I'm sort of debating that. I shot out my resume to a few people today, um, so I'm trying to increase my relationship with myself by giving myself more options, by giving myself more exposure. And trial and error is a beautiful thing. Sometimes it brings forth serendipity where we end up with a prize or reward or solution we didn't know really was available to us, or we weren't perceiving at the time. And then sometimes we get nowhere, but we feel good because we've exercised our uh, efficacy. We've created opportunities for our advancement. So I think most, most of all, it's, it's more important to, to focus on your relationship with yourself and to make sure you love yourself, make sure you understand yourself, make sure you're secure within yourself. And that means doing the hard things. Look for, your, look for contradictions within your own way of thinking. Look for ways you judge other people, but don't judge yourself uh, in that same way or vice versa to where you allow yourself to be judged by someone else, but 
you don't judge others in that way. Either way, um, not that's not a, a healthy balance, I don't think. You want your judgments of others, your judgments of yourselves to be based on the same set of parameters and you want to also be judged by those set of parameters. So that way everything's consistent. You wouldn't get mad at someone for doing something that you wouldn't want someone to get mad at you for doing and vice versa. Um, so for me, being in the travel lifestyle, I get to crumble up the scrap paper, throw it out and start fresh a lot of times a year as opposed to, you know, I used to think it was crazy that I, I moved around and had a new house, you know, once every year, once every two years. You know, Try Homeless was about living in a new place every day, kind of, and just pushing around. And there was a real lack of substance and security in that um, way of living. I did enjoy the freedom. I did enjoy the spontaneity and the excitement. But I didn't um, think I could handle that forever. Um, maybe if I had a tent. Maybe if I had, you know, more resources in the tent. Um, but I want to get back to the thing about hundred dollars a day passive income my websites right now make anywhere from a dollar to I'm not high end like four or five dollars a day in ads um, and affiliate sales and all that so I'm on my way I might be 120th of the way there I might be one uh, percent of the way there but I'm on my way to a degree um, and one way I can get further along and you can start yourself down the quest of passive income is you can reach out to me about buying your own website or your own mobile app like I've done and um, you know for an investment as small as a few hundred dollars at times and obviously going all the way up to you know the hundreds and hundreds of thousands multiple hundreds of thousands there's websites and apps and sometimes portfolios of websites and apps for sale right now that I can help you broker transactions on and I can help you grow those properties to make them more profitable over time I've already started reaching out to potential investors and partners for, um, you know, a co-owner ownership, partnership, management strategy um, kind of relationship where someone comes in with the equity, purchases a website or uh, an app, and I will manage all the technical aspects from hosting to social media to SEO to marketing, content creation, um, and so forth. And for that, I take um, about a 25% cut is what I... Um, what I mandate on that, which is fair, which is an industry standard. So I want to make my audience aware of that, um, my current audience and the audience in the future, that you, know, you can create freedom for yourself by having a form of passive income that follows you all around the globe. Google will pay you or Amazon or ClickBank or Commission Junction. All of these different uh, affiliate and online marketing uh, monetization strategies will pay you regardless of what country you're in. So you could travel all around the world and if you're making $100 a day, maybe you only cash out once a month, but that $3,000 check from Google should should make it help you make it through the month. Or if you have an $800 check from Google and $1,200 from Amazon and $500 from ClickBank, you get the picture. Um, so if any of this sounds interesting to anybody who's got some small amount of savings that's not earning anything for them sitting around, Reach out to me. We can work with a couple hundred. We can work with a few thousand. We can work with, um, you know, the sweet spot's really around twenty-five to forty thousand uh, dollars. A twenty-five thousand dollar investment should make you anywhere from twelve fifty a month up to like twenty-two or twenty-four hundred dollars a month. So it's not that bad if you think about it to get all your money back in about ten to twenty months. So that's my kind of big plan for the future. I will be traveling. Um, and I will be creating more content for you guys. Hopefully, this was informative. Hopefully, this guys gave. Uh, hopefully, this video gave you guys some new ways of thinking or new uh, avenues for for self growth or exploration. And uh, as always, I do love your guys' feedback, and I appreciate your comments, your shares, and uh, all your engagement on social media, on YouTube, on the blog site, and anywhere else that you see fit. So um, keep the suggestions coming in. Keep the feedback coming in. Share, comment, and like. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.